Good morning everyone and welcome to the next weekend practice. I would say we are directly getting started and so just take a step back so you have some space and let's start to warm the body up a little bit and like all the sessions before the quickest way to do this is that we start and just move a little bit and jump a little bit. And so let's go together. Your feet, lace them together again. Your attention, bring it back to the body. And so you can concentrate on the spine. Stand straight, bring the arms in front of the chest. One more time, in and out. Okay, from here, start to shake off the arms a little bit. You can start small jumps. Yeah, for example, right now, even if I'm shaking, but the feet are not leaving the floor. So everything is really loose. Just shake. Yeah, continue. So there's nothing complicated about just starting to shake. And the easy way is you set yourself a timer, for example, two minutes, three minutes, and just start shaking off. Yeah, then our jumps now, this time you leave the floor and continue. jumping a little bit and legs out so let's go together 36 times one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one, two, three, four, five, and six. Ah, continue. Smaller jumps again. One more minute. a little bit yeah, rhythm that makes it easier yeah, once you have a rhythm once you have a structure it makes it easier to follow so uh, let's stay in this particular uh, exercise now as we go um, again 36 times yeah one two three four five six Eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Continue. Small jumps. And arms. Yeah. Continue jumping. Shoulders rotate to the front while we are jumping. Yeah, small ones. Yeah, keep the fist close to the body, not out here, uh, because then it gets very exhausting. Make it close here. Yeah? And we go 36 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six. Good. So now, like I said, this was the quickest way to get the body activated. And uh, once you already feel that you're slowly starting to warm up and the body starts to heat up. Now we are starting our joint openings. Therefore start with the fist again. Open, close. Yeah? Open, close. Ah, here you see, it's like very old, but I don't wanna throw it away. So I just take it off. Okay, continue with the fist. So, 36 times, yeah, from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one. Okay. Yeah. On some of you, I can see. Look, when you uh, last time, last weekend, I told you about is not only the quantity uh, of what we are doing, but it's especially the quality of how you are doing something. So this time, even if it's just the fingers, yeah, when we open, really open completely, not open halfway. Open the thumb completely. Open the index finger completely. Yeah, middle finger. Until the palm is really stretched open. Then small and open completely. Uh, not halfway, not, not only so. Uh, so let's go again. Uh, 18 more times, completely open. Yeah. One, close. Two, close. Three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, very good. Next, rotate the fists inwards. Yeah, use the complete range of your joints. Yeah, start slow so you don't hurt yourself. But anyway, then start to use the complete range of your fists, of the wrists. Yeah, slightly, very little. If you want to make the movement bigger, you can also integrate a little bit the elbow. Yeah, so then it's not just here in the front. It's here, yeah, if you look in this position, it's also the elbow a little bit. Yeah, make it round, 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 so that we don't always just start and stop the movement is always continuously one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Other direction, but we go directly elbow, other direction out. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, shake off. Okay, something just to play around in between. Uh, just that you start to get a better connection for the body. If, for example, you make only right shoulder, you try to separate the right shoulder from the rest of the body and just, for example, rotate right side. So, but now pay attention, for example, yeah, try to separate from the rest of the body so that it doesn't have influence see right now also my spine is moving together with the shoulder the left side also moves this time in this exercise no we don't want that everything moves we want the spine stay straight and so you concentrate right now that when you move it's just the right shoulder, the right shoulder blade, the collarbone, but that's it. Not until the spine. The spine try to not move. Yeah? So that means you must learn to stay very focused on what you want to do and not spread uh, the awareness too much all over. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one more, nine. Same. We go for the left shoulder. Again, slowly, slowly that the spine doesn't move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then next, go more inside until the spine and rotate. Just rotate feet around shoulder wide and for right now, just go here. And this time, this time, body arms and legs this time they are uh, connected yeah, I am moving the foot I'm moving the heel up because elsewise I would hurt my joints I would hurt my knee if I turn too much that's why I'm supporting this movement yeah, by switching the stances as well yeah, but still up here it's all it's all relaxed yeah, pay attention to your shoulders to the shoulder to the neck yeah it's not up here this is too tense release release Yeah, continue, continue while I'm watching what you're doing. So also something I can see on many of you is, yeah, the eyes go first, the body follows. So that means your eyes must go. The eyes, the eyes. So don't watch on the ground too much. Yeah, eyes, eyes. Head, eyes, head, spine. Okay, now at the same time also don't wobble around. Yeah, not too much wobbling. Yeah, not, not this one. Yeah, so this is, yeah, right now, for example, watch. This is the center of yourself. It's the spine. Okay. Yeah. Look, uh, a short story in between, so you can have a short rest. Um, sometimes we call the spine. It is the axis for your life. It's the it's the axis that we need for our life. And in order that this axis is um, properly functioning. It needs to be able to fulfill four, uh, four functions, your axis, our spine. The first one is it needs to be able to just bend forward. Yeah? So bend forward. Yeah? Bending forward is one of those functions. The second function is yeah, when you yeah, lean back. So, bending to the front and leaning to the back. So, and the next two functions is afterwards, front back, 
and then left left torsion so from here look left and other side right so and every time when there's anything on our body which is um, which is blocking one of these four movements so either you have problems bending to the front you have problems leaning to the back you have problems turning to the left or to the right then we say it's the beginning of some other problems that your body will have later on because if the axis already is not working properly then everything that is connected to this axis also later on will suffer and will have some issues so and this is the reason why it is so important to watch your posture and why we are making for example also these exercises in order that you really feel that the spine is important and that also means that the mind is focused on the spine while you make all these movements and therefore and how do i know or how do you know that you are focused on the spine it is by keeping it aligned it is by keeping it aligned for example when you make this torsional movement so the spine is straight and the spine always stays straight the spine stays straight and so you continue with this exercise keep the spine straight at the same time you also try and follow as good as you can each movement of each single vertebra that is making the spine if you can you make it if you can't you practice it yeah so the attention must come more to the spine okay good then next exercise bending the spine to the front so we are bending to the front before you make it let me give you a short uh, short instructions on what you are paying attention to so the chin you take in yeah the chin you're tucking it in already by tucking in the chin this area here your neck you start to make it long yeah you start to open this area you start to make it long that's why you need to keep the chin tucked in at the same time this next exercise is not about how low can i go yeah therefore there are other other things to do this is not about how low can you go it is about how much can you open uh, how much can you curve and open the back side of the spine so this is why you yeah look you it's like you it's bulging out the back so and the exercise looks like this you bring the hands you cross them place them on the top of the head and just yeah, bend to the front so remember the chin tuck it in keep it in and your attention your focus is on the back side of the spine to open it more up now if you are making it correctly yeah, stay in the position don't look if you make it correctly you can already feel that mostly and especially in the morning the back side of the spine when you make this exercise there is an area which is already maybe hurting a little bit or where you feel there is some pain and there is some tension 
And exactly this tension and exactly this type of pain, this is what we want to learn and release more. So you stay in this position. Yeah, the mind is focused. Yeah, you are searching for every place in that spine, along that spine, that's too tense. You locate the tension and then comes now the magical part. No, just kidding. But now comes the important part. After you have located the tension, what is the method? What is one of the methods in order to release the tension? And this is where now the methods, the techniques and the breath comes in. Yeah. And we just use the very simple method. You locate the tension inside of the body. The mind, you stay at that location. You inhale into this location. And during the exhalation, your mind releases from this space. Yeah, it sounds very complicated, but it's very easy. You are simply using the breath in order to release tension at the same time. So let's go from here. Eight breaths. So inhale and exhale. Inhale. arms hang, let the arms hang down and when we are standing up we try to stand up starting with the mind. Yeah, you go to your ankles then you move upwards to the knees then you move upwards through the thigh to your hips then to your waist uh, and then the spine from the lowest one, they start to roll up. Now you're between the shoulder blades, now you're at the neck. And now you straighten up the spine. Okay. Good. This was number one, bending to the front. Second exercise, now we open the front side of our body, the front side of our chest. Yeah, so from here, arms to the side. And here, the, the chin, stretch it open. Stretch this open. Yeah, now I just take this side. So the chin is up. So that you feel, or maybe you don't feel, but there is a tension line from the chin down the neck, uh, over the shoulder, over the arms, until the finger now on both sides, from here to the right side and from here to the left, and both are connected through the chest. Yeah, so also here.
You stay in the posture. Yeah. You concentrate and try to observe where is the tension located. Where are you having tension along this posture? Then you are inhaling into this area of tension. And during the exhalation, you open. Yeah, stay in this position and continue for yourself. No. And also pay attention right now your neck. Yeah, the neck don't uh, don't tilt the head too much to the back so that you are blocking the, the spine again. Yeah, if you are moving the head too much to the back and you are not uh, trained, then you are blocking the spine. But don't block the spine, just here. Ah, yeah, like a turtle. A turtle. Yeah, like you, you put the head out of the house like this. So stretch the neck out, but without compressing the spine. This is important. Yeah, and also here the fingers, straighten the fingers. Yeah, no straight fingers means no attention there, but you want attention there. <clears throat> so again from here, stretch the neck out, locate the tension, inhale. Exhale and release. Second time, inhale, and release. Third time, inhale, and release. Four more times, inhale, And release. Again, in and out. Two more times, in and out. And one more time, inhale and out. Okay. So, um, so meanwhile, I already shared with you the six day morning practice where you have quite a lot of exercises. So you have the six days, then at the same time you have four sessions from the last weekend practice. So this weekend I will not give you too much more new exercises, but I would like more to um, explain to you a little bit how to properly use all these exercises and practice them in a way that brings you really benefit. So it's not about the quantity of how many exercises you have, it's about the way how we do them. So, and very, very often the last time was the question, how does all these exercises fit together with the Buddhist practices and uh, all the way of thinking here. Well, it's very, I make it very simple. If you don't know where a problem is located, we cannot fix it. But in order to know where a problem is lying, we need to be able to observe very good. In order to observe very good, we need to be aware of 
everything that's happening, everything that happens inside our body, everything as much as we can be aware of what is happening around you. The more you are aware, the higher the chances are that you can do something about whatever is there that you don't like. So awareness is the fundamental basis in order to create anything. It doesn't matter. You can also be aware and create bad things. No problem. But if you want to do good things, also there. So awareness is number one. So, but now we talk about our body. Now we talk about exercises. So how do you train this awareness now? You train the awareness by being more aware. Yeah, as funny as it sounds, but that's the way how to make it. How do you become more disciplined by doing stuff that is expressing this discipline more? Yeah, how do you become better with this exercise by um, executing, by practicing this exercise? So it's the doing part, it's the action part. But the main point is in which mental state are you making the exercise? It's the mental state. So, and the mental state depends on how deep can you penetrate into your own body. Yeah, I exaggerate now a little bit, but it's about in the beginning learning. We need to find the proper balance between yeah, staying soft, soft and loose and all, all nice and fluffy. So on the one side we have this softness, but we cannot all the time stay soft. So this is why sometimes we have the hard practices. Yeah, sometimes you need to train and also tense up the complete body in order that we are able to access the soft side about us and the hard side about us. So which one is better is the wrong question because it's not about which of these two states is better. But it's beneficial if we are able to access both of these states, softness and hardness. So, because the more and the higher and the deeper your relationship to this hardness becomes, then it's also more easy for you to detect when you have tension located inside of yourself. And this tension is something that you normally don't want to have it excessively in your life. It's something we don't necessarily want to keep for a too long time in our life. So final story before we continue with some more exercises. Uh, as some of you know, um, the Shaolin temple, the way of living, the way of thinking here, it's mainly based on three different main philosophies and one of them is called the Buddhism, more especially the Zen Buddhism or the Chan Buddhism. Second one is Taoism and third one is Confucianism. Now, Taoism. Taoism is that, uh, is that philosophy, is that way of life where the yin and yang symbol for example, is coming from. So the yin and yang symbol is nothing Buddhistic, Buddh Buddhistic, is something coming from Taoism. So, and one teacher from uh, the Taoist teachings, one of the highest teachers, he was called Lao Tzu, yeah, the old teacher. And it's a very nice story and it's very simple. He observed a child, a baby that just was born on this earth. And he realized, okay, that child is very soft, soft by touching, but at the same time is also very weak by nature because 
uh, that baby still needs the parents and somebody to take care of the child. So soft and weak on the one side. But the complete life still in front of the child. And as the second observation, Master Lao Tzu, he observed there was an old man, or it can also be an old woman, who just passed away. So what happens with the body, with the corpse that is passing away? It is becoming very hard and very stiff. It is becoming immovable. It is starting to stagnate. It's blocking. Yeah? It's hard and it is stiff. And just by these two observations, Master Lao Tzu um, thought about it yeah? and made the conclusion. The soft and the weak belongs to life. The hard and the stiff belongs to death. So, hard and stiff. Hard and stiff is the same category as too much excessive tension for a too long time. And this is why if you want to live longer, you don't want too many things about you become hard and stiff. And at the moment, maybe you understand it as I'm talking about physically hard and stiff. Yeah, but this is only the beginning. Because it's also possible nowadays that people are mentally hard and stiff, mentally um, immovable, mentally not flexible. And this is by far the bigger issue nowadays, I think. So getting rid of tension of the body is way more easy than getting rid of this type of tension which is embedded in the mind, in the thoughts and also in, in emotional states of, uh, of the people. So pay attention to this. Okay, now and therefore, and how to stay flexible, how to stay more movable? Well, sometimes it's necessary that we open the body. Open the body and stretch the body open. So first exercise for today. So the movement is just from here. Yeah, both palms push up. Yeah, let's start with this movement first. Bring the arms down. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Inhale. Exhale. And continue. Inhale. And exhale. Continue with the movement uh, while I'm giving you a few more things to pay attention on. So the palm all the way when you inhale, yeah, the palms are facing upwards. Now look in the moment when it's reaching about uh, chest height, my fingers slightly point to the front, keep turning and end up 
here on the side. Yeah? So looking from the side is here. In, fingers, front, and then they're here on the side, ready to push up. Yeah? So I inhale here, then fingers turn, wrist turns, elbow, elbow go in until I am in this position. So, now why? Why is it important that the movement is like this? Because there is no other possibility than to move your body in this way in order to stay connected. In order to stay connected. In order that at all times you can feel actually what you are going to stretch later on. Here, the arm stays connected. It stays connected so because now it's connected to the back side of uh, the back side of your body. Then when you're pushing upwards, here the hands really push. Yeah. Fingers try not to uh, keep them too unstraight, straighten. So when you are up. Uh, straighten the fingers straight and for the beginning push yeah. push open and stretch upwards yeah. one and push and release now, the way how I breathe is I inhale. Yeah, I still inhale at the end. And now, I am inhaling. So, to the breathing or to the breath, yeah. later on maybe I'm going to upload this video again. So at the moment it's more important for me that you understand what you are doing and how you are going to use all of these, uh, these movements to really bring you some feelable benefit than just copying what I'm doing. Now, is not the most common way of breathing but again this exercise right now I want to open the body I want to open the body so how do I make it in order that I can open the body I need to have a very very clear idea about how does it feel when my body is closed? How, so from where do I want to open? What do I want to open? So that means I need to put myself in this position where I feel, aha, okay. So now I can feel my tension line. Now I can feel which muscles are engaged and which muscles are limiting my movement at the moment. So this is why, this is the first step. I want to make sure that I can really have a clear sense of what do you want to release there? What do you want to open there? Which posture is it? Which muscle groups is it that you really want to open? Yeah, this is the first step and this is that one. So when I inhale, That's this. This is why all the time when I inhale, uh, it is like I inhale, which means 
the pressure inside of my body starts to increase because your lungs start to inflate and get bigger. So you inhale, the pressure starts to build up inside of you. At the same time, you are in a very specific posture and are also pushing. So, and once your mind is settled in the right, in the right state, what you then realize is, it's this complete, it's like you're a balloon. It's like you're that Michelin, the, you know, the Michelin uh, guy. Yeah? He has bubbles everywhere. He looks very nice. But it's like this, yeah? like you're inflated. So and this is in a way how uh, it can feel when there is this first movement. Yeah? So from here, inhale. So, and then comes the important part, because that was just step number one. And step number two now is, because now you can feel it so good, <laughs> because you can feel all the bubbles and that pressure so good, because the pressure is there now, this is why now you can exhale and release the pressure. And but now important, you release the pressure, but you don't release the posture. So that means yeah, I inhale and on the inhalation, I'm already uh, as much stretched and I'm pushing as much as I can during the inhalation. When I'm starting to exhale, my arm, my structure is not, is not like this. So I am not exhaling and, and releasing this posture here. It's the other way around. I inhale and it's already very much up. I exhale. I exhale and stretch even more. You exhale and stretch even more because that exhalation, because you're releasing the tension. This is why the body starts to open. The muscles start to be, start to become longer. And this is the reason why it also can become a little bit painful. Also this type of exercises. Yeah. But when you feel that, okay, there is something you're doing with the body, when you feel, okay, something is happening, then it's correct. If it's too relaxing, is something wrong? So again, this exercise, let me guide you and we make this exercise now a few more times. So from here, inhale. Push. Exhale, push more. Then release. Inhale. Exhale, push more. Inhale. Exhale, push. Yeah, three more times. Inhale. Yeah, two more times. Inhale. Inhale, stay in the position. During exhalation, push more. Exhale, push more. And then arms release. And two more times. Uh, inhale. 
Yeah, push, 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 inhale more. And keep the push, exhale, push more. Okay, and one final time. Yeah. Inhale. But it was better than before, but this is also still not finished yet. It's still not finished because our focus right now in that exercise that we did was mainly the upper body. But we can open even more. But this may be, let's see, either tomorrow or maybe this afternoon, uh, I will tell you how to open more. Like I said, right now it was just a focus more or less on the upper body. But it's about connection. It's about connection. And therefore we also need to consider the lower part, everything that we do below as well. Um, ah, yes. And maybe very very confusing very confusing but i still tell you so that it's out yes there is something about unity there is something about connecting or reconnecting or uniting or understanding where things belong together so yes it is about making something return to one return to <laughs> return to the source again however you call it doesn't matter yes there is something about it but the way how to get there the way how to approach this conceptual idea the approach how to get there is not that you 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 create with the mind that it's united Because like this, it can also mean you're just tricking yourself. So like you walk around and everywhere, yes, everybody's connected and I love you and you love me and we are all the same. But this is like very much, this is very much intellectual. This is very much the mind again, the mind playing his, his, cinem his, his cinema, uh, his movie. It's the mind playing the movie again. We need methods. We need methods and one method how to get to a better understanding of how things are connected is by learning all the separate areas. The way how to get to unity is by learning to separate. Yeah? As an, un as, as an uh, explanation, today we had yeah, rotate the shoulder. Yeah? And I told you, um, don't don't move the complete body. Yeah. So I don't, didn't want you to to do this. Yeah. What I wanted you to do is this. Everything, the body, you keep straight and try to. Try to isolate. Try to isolate the shoulder, yeah, the collarbone and the shoulder blade. Try to separate it from the rest of the body. Why? Because only when you know or only when you are able to separate it, then you also understand how it is connected only by understanding how it is separated you know why it is connected yeah very strange but 
No, it's not strange. It's just a, a <laughs> it's just a different way of practice. And yeah, so don't don't misconfuse these things. This is it's it's like this. That uh, yeah, sometimes yeah we know what the goal is, but it's the method. We need the proper methods. We need to know what is working and what is not working. Okay, very nice. So, thank you all for joining this morning session. And today, 2 o'clock German time, 8 o'clock New York time, we will have another session. See you all later again. And until then, have a nice day. Bye bye. Hello everyone, so good morning and good afternoon to all of you. This is the second session for today, so let's just get started. And uh, as I mentioned in this first session today, I have already started uh, sharing many videos to you and also uploaded them so you can always repeat uh, watching them but for this weekend right now what I would like to do is to give you a little bit more explanations and also some more details on what to pay attention on while you are making the practices yeah because <clears throat> I think meanwhile you do not really need more exercises yeah but you need to start and uh, increase the quality and the way of how you are doing the exercises and especially what your mind is doing during all these exercises. So to get started in the beginning, very, very important, just as in every practice, catch your attention back to yourself again. Feet, we are placing them together, stand straight, both palms in front of the chest, shri and bow. Elbows lift up, inhale. Fill the chest, exhale, hands down. Left leg step out. Inhale. Facing down, exhale. And again, inhale. And exhale. One more time, in. Now, we are inhaling, our movement stays the same, 
but the feet at the same time you inhale and push up on the toes exhale heels come down to the floor again inhale heels up Exhale, heels down. Inhale, heel up. Exhale, heel down. And continue with this exercise. Inhale. Inhale. Exhale. And one more time. Inhale. And exhale. We continue eight more times. In. Turn the hands, palms down, exhale, heel down, arms down to the ground. Palms face upwards again, inhale. Turn the palms, exhale. And in. in and out four more times in open the chest palms face down exhale three more times in Facing downwards, exhale. And two more times, in. And down. And one more time, in. Shoulder wide, maybe a little bit wider, but around shoulder wide. Then the knees slightly bend them a little bit. So don't straighten them all the way, just a slight bend. Very little. Very little. So place your attention for the moment on the complete surface of the foot so not too much in front of the toes not too much on the heel yeah, try to have it balanced even so maybe with a little bit of focus right below let me show you right here in this area this is where your center of gravity this is where you're focusing right now while you are standing. This is the point where you're standing on. Watch your breath. Inhale. Exhale. Stay at this point. So, then very, very slowly we just start to concentrate our mind on the right foot and also our spine we move over to the right leg 
So a lot of weight right now should be on your right leg. Then very slowly, legs and knees still bend. Slowly, spine straight, back to the center, all the way to the left side. And now spine is exactly over the left foot. Rest of the body is relaxed. Then slowly shift. Right leg. Now we are using our breath to help us. When I move to the left side, I inhale. When I'm above the leg, I exhale and concentrate on the foot. Moving to the other side, inhale, exhale, to the foot. Inhale. Inhale, switch to the right side. Exhale. Down. Inhale. Okay, stay focused. Only this. Switch to the left. Uh, to the right side, inhale and exhale. Switch back to the left side, inhale and exhale. Two more times, inhale. Exhale, right leg, one more time, in, and out. Now we're adding some balancing exercise. So inhale to the right side, exhale. Leg up. Then step back down, inhale. Left leg, exhale. Then leg down. Inhale, back to the right leg, in. Shift the weight, inhale and up. Leg down. Shift the weight, inhale, exhale. Shift the weight, inhale, exhale, yeah, continue with the exercise, foot, touch the floor, 
then consciously move the weight onto the right foot. Feel how it's traveling to the right leg. Left leg is getting light. Because it is light, then it's easy to lift up the leg. So, in this position, your spine, your chest, yeah, the right leg, the right foot, it's all in a straight line, so you can have a reference point and keep the balance. Afterwards, first, left leg. Yeah, it's still balanced. Yeah, keep the balance. Then, touch the floor. Consciously, bring the weight onto the left leg. Right leg, empty and up. Step down. Inhale. Exhale. Step down. Inhale. Exhale. Four more times, continue, right leg, step down, consciously shift the weight onto the right leg, and exhale, foot up, then leg down, shift the weight, inhale, and exhale, up, right leg down, shift the weight, inhale, exhale, and leg down, inhale, Exhale, up. And last time. Foot down. Shift the weight. And up. Okay, then back to the center. Warm up a little bit quicker now, like usual. The quickest way is to jump. So let's start with small jumps. But this time the first jumps, look, I am not lifting off the ground. So it's like just shaking. Shaking but the feet stay on the floor. So just shake. And also watch. You can always test yourself how relaxed or how tense you are by also adding some torsional movement. So feet stay on the floor, but you just shake, shake and turn a little bit the body. So you can feel better yeah, where is any tension. When you shake off, also shake off until the end of the fingers. Feel your fingers until the end of them. Don't forget to breathe. Now 
small jumps lifting off the floor. Very lightly jump. Yeah, one minute and go. seconds okay then feet place them together palm you can cross the fingers, inhale, yeah, push the arms straight up and push, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Okay. So, quickly to this exercise before we are repeating that one again. Now, important in this one is your fingers, you can cross them and the palm, stretch them. So they are above the head, but not like this. It's stretch it. Yeah, stretch the, the inside of the palm, stretch it out. So it's stretched out, it's above the head. And now important is that you don't make this movement with the arms. So pay attention to your elbow joints. The elbow joints are not moving while you are doing this exercise. Yeah, pay a little bit attention, for example, arms are up and now when I start to push the push comes from the back yeah so you are lifting completely with your back muscles you're pushing your arms up so yeah continue while i'm watching you and it can be very helpful if during the push when you are pushing upwards you are inhaling so during the inhalation it's pushing so from here i inhale and During the inhalation, you push up. Yeah, from now, everybody go 18 more times. Use your back muscles. Keep the elbows straight. Yeah, 18 times. Let's go together. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one more time, inhale, push up, and relax, very good. So, this now, we were starting to stretch upwards. So, now, we are taking the back side of our body, and the movement looks like this. Same, hands, you can cross them again. Feet also together and from here yeah, right go yeah if you cannot touch the ground it's no problem but from here the eyes watch to the floor where you want to go and then from here one two three four five six yes so feet also again together now a little bit a little bit wider then it's easier for you then arms down take the eyes to the floor and from here go 36 times start slowly always a little bit more legs stay straight don't bend the knees don't bend the knees Keep them, stretch them, yeah, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, yeah, continue, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Leg straight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and ten and sixteen more one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and one two three four five and six and slowly stand up again inhale and exhale in and out okay now from here left foot just take it out a little bit so the toes are up the heels are on the floor yeah and here we try to go yeah try to go with the elbow down down to the foot yeah just as good as you can the arm can rest on the head the elbow is pointing to the toes yes the left leg is straight the left leg is straight yeah and just from here go one two three four five six seven eight 
center then right leg heel foot up arms change and same exercise on the right side important is that your right leg you try to keep it as straight as possible so you can feel yeah, if it's only possible until here then it's also not a problem yeah, important is that you make it correct so that you feel ah okay it's already starting to engage right now and from this point here then I go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one, two. Three, four, five, and six. And back to the center. Open stretch. Inhale. Exhale. Again. Inhale. One more time, inhale, and exhale. Okay. Now, these were, at the moment, just a few exercises that we are using in the monastery that we are using in the Shaolin arts to practice and stretch our legs a little bit more and very important is that you make it on a regular basis doesn't uh, make too much sense if uh, for weeks long you are not doing the exercises and then you are trying to achieve as much as you can like this it's not going to work so but now i think all of our bodies still should be decently warm and warmed up at the moment and now i would like to introduce you also to a way of practice which maybe is not so uh, not so known um, in the western world and this is very static practice so it's like called standing exercises because there's not much movement happening but even so that there will not be a lot of movement you will realize uh, it's still not so easy and therefore right now I always show you the position that we are standing in and then let's see how long we can survive it maybe I count until 18 only or maybe I count until 72 it depends very much on you <laughs> okay so the first one very very famous and very beneficial also very beneficial in regards to how how much strength in the legs and how grounded you are and how much connected you can stay to the ground number one 
wo uh, mabu mabu the horse stands the beloved horse stands yeah it's going to follow us our whole life because it's very important so mabu from here let's start feet together one two three then you can take them slightly straight so now important your butt don't stick the butt out like this keep the butt in bring the arms to the front uh, and here go slowly in to the horse stance uh, this is horse stance so now I see you're all in so let's start and go 18 times only yeah concentrate on this position try not to move and I count until 18 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven and eight okay slowly inhale stand up okay short rest in between yeah now i give you some time to to regenerate and I give you some small instruction on what we are paying attention now in the next round that we are making these exercises. So this morning I mentioned already that indeed all the martial art practices, the way of living here and the way of thinking, there is one purpose maybe behind it and so it is to reconnect ourselves to get a better relationship back to everything that we are having and that we are surrounded with. So it's about building up connection again, building up uh, unity again. Okay. But in order to connect, we need to know what to connect. So that means if you want to connect, we still need to know what are the individual and separate parts and for this exercise right now let's make it very easy you have the lower torso and you have the upper body okay so we have the legs from the waist the hips downwards and everything above it in the next exercise now so the same marble but what i want you to do is separate in your mind those two areas from each other your lower torso and your upper torso separate them from each other means well it's very apparent that when we go into this position into the mabu the legs they need some type of tension they need some type of muscle contraction because they are active they are responsible so we can keep our posture yes but it's only the legs that need this type of engagement the rest of the body your upper torso i want you to completely release as much as you can yeah let me show you what i mean just watch first before we make it together so even if i'm going down on the marble but look yeah, i exaggerate now with the movement but up here the body up here is still everything it's very it's still very soft yeah so i'm not super tense it's not everything hard just the legs they are hard but up here uh, you see it's the upper torso is relaxed the upper torso is relaxed 
so we can still freely move in only here this it seems like it is locked it seems like it is locked but actually it's not locked so again let's go together into the mabu but pay attention this time to the quality and what your mind is able to detect within your own body upper torso relax and below the waistline make what is necessary to keep the posture this time we go 36 okay so from here inhale exhale in and Let's stay upper body, yeah. relax. You don't need to move, you can move, but better be still and just feel inside and know that it is relaxed. Yeah. So you can move around the spine, yeah, small circular movements, and we go 36. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, sixteen more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two. Three, four, five, and six, and and bring the feet together. Okay, very good. So even if we are not moving too much, or making any jumping jumping stuff or anything like this yeah if you make it correct you feel the body starts to generate heat now let's use this heat that right now we have and spread it throughout the body how do we spread it by relax stay relaxed relaxed and turn yeah. finger Finger, finger, yeah. yeah, straight, straight, straight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, 
Yes, <laughs> I can see many of you are touching your legs because finally the legs they are feeling alive again. So they feel alive because you did something with them and be careful in case like that you're feeling pain then maybe don't go in the marbu too low. Okay, for right now, take a small rest and let me show you a little bit what are the things to, to pay attention on. So, especially the marbu, because in all the exercises that I shared until now, you will always find this exercise, always find the marbu in there. So, it's not about going low. The purpose for you is not to go low. The purpose is to make it correct. And that means do not sacrifice your posture only to go low. What I mean by that is that right now my back, you know, my spine is straight. I can use my hands also to support me. So I push my hands to the front in order that I can feel this goes to the front and the spine stands in the 90 in a 90 degree angle to my arm yeah so it's like my indicator it's my indicator if something is gonna uh, tilt so stay straight when I go down so I only go down as much as long as the back is standing straight. If you realize that while you are going down, the butt starts to move out, then don't go more down. Then concentrate and remain in the proper structure. And it's just a question of repetitive exercise until you are later on be able to go lower but do not sacrifice therefore the posture okay so now we are taking a second position a little bit more easy maybe it looks but we will see so we start also with a very wide marble or stance okay and then the right leg let's put it straight and yeah let's just take this posture right now here okay so the right leg is straight the left knee is bent uh, this is probably too high this is too low yeah right now this is too low here around this so that you feel you still have some tension and some power inside the legs so this is the posture the right leg straight straight not bent try to push the heel on the floor the heel is on the floor bring the right arm to the front right arm to the front the right shoulder is not up here uh, it's not up here in this posture uh, bring it down bring the shoulder down uh, and the left arm let's just put it here over the head so if you look from the front it's here yeah some take it in now you see here is my palm here is my fist and here is exactly the head in between yeah so it's like a frame it's like a frame so this position let's stay here and count until 36 one two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one. Continue. Two, 
three, four, five, six, a little bit lower everyone, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and sixteen more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and six more, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, from here, directly switch over to the other side. This time, left leg is straight, right leg is bent, and left arm straight, shoulder down, right hand on top, above the head, in front of your forehead. And stay in the position, don't move. And 36, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sixteen more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and return back. Center, inhale, and release. Good. Can shake off the legs a little bit. So, all the postures that I'm sharing with you, many of them, if not all of them, there is not just one way how to practice them. We can practice all of these things in a dynamic way and we can also practice all of them in a static way. But dynamic is not quite always just dynamic and static is not always just static so in order for you to practice properly and uh, for example in the static practice right now you need to learn to not tense everything about the body yeah sometimes why do we need to study and need to build up a relationship with our body because we don't want to waste energy. Yeah, if some of you maybe uh, use the term chi or use the term life force or simply use energy, it doesn't matter. We don't want to waste our time and our effort doing things that do not bring us benefit. This is just something in general we don't want to do. So that means, for example, if we are standing in the Mabu, then it is a practice also for your mind. Yeah? It's very obvious what, okay, I take the Gongbu. It's very obvious what the position of the body is. Yeah? So therefore, you can, for example, watch images, watch the picture, or watch how I am standing, so you see, okay, like this it is supposed to look. But far more important is, but how do I feel at the moment on the inside? And you see, I'm still standing quite low, but my upper torso is still very flexible. It still can move. So that means 
I do not have any, any unnecessary tension on top of, of my body. And in all the postures that we are practicing, this is like your purpose to learn, okay, so in this position, I can feel exactly which muscles are engaged. If I'm in this position, I also feel, ah, okay, these muscles are now engaged. So that means we are building up, we are training ourselves in order that we are able to access all different areas separately from our body, from our muscle groups. Because when you are able to have a very clear picture, a very clear feeling about your own body, what is where and which muscle is supposed to, to do what, at what time, then now can start uh, the nice things and you can start and create some, yeah, maybe you call it choreography or maybe you can just call it a move, a move, a coordinated move. Coordinated move means at the right time, the right thing. At the right time, the right tension. And just to give you an, an outview from this last two exercises for what we can use it afterwards, it's a dynamic exercise, which then can look like this, for example. So, we we'll start here, then here. So, yeah? But at the moment, you see, it's still all in a very linear, it's very linear still. It's very linear, so it's fluent, but it's still, you would say, it doesn't have power yet. It does not have power yet. So, where does the power come from? The power comes from because you are able to change the status quo of two, of two states very quickly. And what I mean by that is, you possess the ability and you know how it is when the body is soft and you have to, to uh, train the body also that you know how is it when the body is tense, when it is filled, when it is full. Yeah? And this change from empty to full, no, from, from moving to stagnation. Yeah? This is what is going to generate the power. And then it's going to look like this. Yeah, you're soft, everything is soft. Boom. Then it's hard. Yeah. Boom. Hard. 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 So it's always the change. It's always the change between soft and hard that is making uh, yeah, that is the cause for the creation of force. Good. So um, I'm going to upload, I think, all these sessions from this morning and this one. Yeah, before I uh, was separating them and uploading them in two different files. But I think since I was talking way too much in this session yeah, and you didn't train enough, I'm going to upload the first session from this morning together with this session because yeah, unfortunately for the ones that are joining from the United States. This morning you couldn't join because maybe it was too early and you were still sleeping. But it makes a lot of sense also that uh, if you have the time, watch that first session. Because there I'm also explaining quite a few things that will make much, much more sense
together with this session right now. And yeah, in this sense, tomorrow morning will be another session and tomorrow afternoon as well. So focus more. I think I shared enough in terms of, um, uh, of different exercises, but now it should be your aim. Look for the quality. Try and increase the quality. It's not anymore that you need quantity. For many of us, yeah, you are using these exercises in order to, to get a healthy body, to get in a good state of body, in a good state of the mind. Yeah? It's not necessarily at the moment uh, the purpose for you to use this and fight against anyone. Therefore, when it's about the physical health and your well-being, I have shared enough. I have shared enough with you, which right now only needs to be practiced on a regular basis and with the right mindset. This is key point number one. It's the mindset. In what state of the mind are you doing these exercises? And this is the reason why we are, we are saying that the martial arts, Shaolin Kung Fu, Shaolin Qigong, the martial arts is good for body and mind. Why is it good for body and mind? Because the mind also is being trained. Yeah? It's trained between you focus on something, yeah, it becomes very, very clear, very deep in the mind, very visible in the mind, and at the same time you also can be open. Then there is no focus. Yeah, focus means there is something very clear there in the mind. Yeah, you, you take a specific area and focus on it. But this focus needs to be trained. And at the same time, sometimes the mind can just be very open and is just receiving whatever is coming there. Well, and we need both of it. We need the ability to be open and sometimes just receive in, in order to hear messages that is, being, um, uh, that is being shared with us. Yeah? Therefore, we need to have an open mind, but when it comes to training, for example, when it comes to the point that there is something you want to achieve, something you want to, to push to the front, then we need focus. That, then we cannot just hang around and, and have no idea. Then we need focus. And those two must become very, very clear to you that it's going to be your decision at all times in which state of the mind you want to put yourself. Because focus itself is not always good. The question is on what are you focusing? And to be open-minded is also not a good thing because it depends also on when do you have that open mind in what kind of circumstance. So, and as long as you do not have the control when I am focused, when I am not focused, yeah, then it's too much, it's too random. It's too random. And then you are under too much influence, which is sometimes not beneficial for you to be under such influence. And therefore, training the body and the mind, using the martial arts, using, using the method and focus, 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 focus. Now watching around. Focus, focus. Yeah, learn to bring the focus, learn to bring the power, learn to bring the awareness, make the mind sharp, make the mind sharp. Okay, uh, sorry, sorry for talking so much today, but I still hope you are awake <laughs> and hopefully you are going to enjoy this day. And ah, as you see, normally I really prefer to make the training outside. But after last week 
after I made that joke about the tornado, I think this week uh, they were sending something bigger, so I decided, okay, better stay in this time. Um, therefore, uh, see you hopefully tomorrow again. And if you do not have enough training, this time I didn't remove the first session from this morning yet. So you can just go on YouTube and watch it again or continue with any exercise that you find there. So have a nice day and thank you all for joining. See you tomorrow again. Thank you.